Hey, I'm Kat Kosho. This is my house. Today I'm joined by Daryl from Peterson Brothers Drywall. We're going to talk about some drywall questions. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> well, thanks. It's a pleasure to be here. I think we can answer some questions for you. Awesome. So when you're looking to hire someone, how do you start choosing what contractor to hire? What are maybe some questions I should be thinking about? Well, when you find somebody, um, how long you've been in business? Who you've done business for? You know, go check one of their jobs out. A lot of them are doing job sites around that you can go look for. Talk to them and see what kind of person they are. The relationship with someone is, is your best key, you know, with your gut instinct. If you don't if you can't talk to them well, then they're not going to perform for you. So what are some of the red flags to look out for? Is there anything that I should look for in a contract or an agreement that is a little out of the ordinary? Yeah, first thing you need to do is make sure that they're licensed and bonded. I mean, if you're kind of worried about them, at least, you know, even call the state to make sure that they're licensed and bonded. Um, and if they're asking you for half up front, I'd be, I'd be kind of worried that they haven't been established long enough, you know, to keep the credit going with their supplier. Just, you know, maybe, maybe not, but um, just do some background checks on them. What should I expect? What's kind of standard or what does a payment schedule look like for a drywall work? Well, anybody that asks you for 50% up, for it, up front and you don't have any, any supplies on the job, is there's something wrong. Once they delivered the material to your job and on your job site, then I would feel comfortable giving them enough money to pay for that material. And that's something you can expect is, is maybe normal for some um, drywall companies. So then you would expect to pay the balance of the job at the end of the job? Yeah. Once the job's done and you're happy, then you can, you know, give them the final payment. I'm assuming most everyone wants to know how much time it's going to take. Yeah. Um, that's a big question. Um, assuming, again, that you have good heat and the job runs good, you figure 14 to 15 days. From the start of the, from the start hanging process before you be able to paint, is a typical, typical job. So when you're starting a project and you're looking at putting some drywall up, can you expect for a walkthrough to be the first step of the process? Yeah, you should walk the house quite a few times with the drywaller. Uh, once in the beginning, for obvious reasons, as far as so he can bid the work, and you can give him details as far as the wrapping of openings. Uh, you take a look at the bowed studs. That type of thing. And then another walkthrough, kind of midway through the project, maybe between the hanging and taping to make the make sure if there's any issues, they can take care of that, you know, in a timely manner. And then before they finish, make sure you're happy with the job. So in the walkthrough, the initial walkthrough, is there anything that the homeowner should have prepared or questions or what kind of can you expect to do during that? Well, most of the time on the first walkthrough, we take a look at boat studs, Make sure the walls are straight. The ceiling, make sure if you, get, if you get any kind of truss left that we can address these issues before before we start hanging. And, um, you know, any openings and stuff like that that are obvious until, until you start covering it up. So when you see walls that aren't straight, what should be expected of the drywaller when it comes to twisting bowed studs or making sure the walls are plumb? During our first walk, we'll address anything that we can see at the time. And then the way of fixing that is you, you get someone to come in yourself or the, you can pay the drywall to come in with an eight foot level, put it on the walls to see if there's any imperfection. And if, if it's a, like 16th of an inch, you can use butt strips if you straighten out walls because soon you will be able to see that looking down a wall, a little bit of a snake if you don't you know prep your job first. And you can see that regardless of what level of texture the wall is at the final product. Yes, texture or no texture, you're going to be able to see the little snake in the wall. <laughs> so we've been going through and trying to make sure our walls are prepped. So we've done some butt stripping. Do you have any helpful tips that you've learned over the years or best way to do it? You know, the eight foot level has always been true for us. You just put an eight foot level on the wall and, you know, try to do the best you can. And if it, if it comes down to the point where you can't get it straight and you can still see it during the taping stage, you can float out a wall with some mud in between the 16 inch studs. 32 inch depends on what you need. They can add a little mud to help out and to straighten out walls. As we've been prepping for drywall, we've noticed that some of the wires, the subcontractors didn't center their borings very well. 
should we be looking at that? Is that something the drywallers would look at or are they kind of just flying through putting things up? Well, that's something pretty much everybody should be looking at. You know, the, the homeowner, the, the good, when you do your walkthroughs, you know, kind of look through that. But when the person goes to hang the board, if it's the, if it's obviously close enough to the, to the wall, they'll, they'll probably say something if they can catch it. But a lot of times they're just rushing through, getting the board up, trying to get the job done. But if it's, if it's more than a quarter inch into the wood, it, you're usually pretty safe. Because an inch and a quarter go through the, the sheetrock is a half inch and then a little bit of the wood. So as long as they stick, you know, maybe a half inch inside, you're good. Should you expect the drywaller and the consult to bring up different fire and sound considerations? Or is that something the homeowner should be aware of? Well, usually it's not the drywaller's responsibility to worry about the sound and fire codes. Um, the homeowner would, would talk to the inspector to let them know what the application they needed. Um, like, I mean, a standard code, we know that 5 eighths is on the, the garage lid for fire. Um, it's not required any place else. We know that. But if, uh, if there's some specific thing that needs to be done, they need to consult their inspector in different areas because codes change in different areas. And as far as sound, sound is a preference from, just depends on what you really want for the, each application. So the 5 eighths is more of a sound deadening material than the half inch. Is that common to use or is it more expensive option? In residential application, the, the half inch is in there for a cost efficiency. Or if you went 5 eighths all over and you really wanted to deaden the sound, it would just cost you a lot more money. So the trade off is sound or right. more money. Yeah. So if sound's more of a personal preference, if I'm worried about sound, I could use the 5 eighths like you mentioned or would insulating be an option or what should I consider if I'm worried about sound? The insulating the walls is probably your number one bet to deaden the sound. And then if you want to uh, use 5 eighths on the interior walls, that's great as far as deadening the sound. But besides that, that's about your only two options, insulation and, and using a thicker board. What type of materials are used on a typical project and what are some of those pros and cons for using this? Well, on a typical residential house that you build, uh, everything is half inch drywall now and five eighths out in the garage lid for fire coat, but everything throughout the rest of the house is half inch. So the only reason you would use five eighths throughout anything else is if a person preferred sound soundproofing. So as a homeowner, should you be concerned about the different product types or product brands that people are using? Most of the products are pretty much the same if, from a supplier point of view. It, so most people will stick to one sort of mud compared to the other, just over loyalty to that. If they've used it for a lot of years, feel comfortable with it, they know what it'll do. So just more of a personal preference yes. then. So what different types of drywall finishes are there? And as a homeowner, how should I start to make that decision on which finish to choose? There's quite a few different types of finishes that you can do. And, and um, like in the garage, most people would do a fire tape. We'd call that level one, just to code. Simple, that's, you know, where you can see everything, every the piece of sheetrock. Then you can step it up to level two and three is more of a, you know, where you're going to have on your um, storage closets, things like that, where you're going to have a lot of imperfections, but it's passing code. And then uh, level three, four, and five, you get into uh, textured finishes. Like most of the residential will have a level three or four and with the textured finish. Level five is a smooth wall, which you usually get in commercial work. So when you walk in the banks and stuff like that, they want it nice and clean and fresh. So and it, there's a huge cost difference compared to a lot of detail work in the smooth wall aspect of it. From your experience, what are some of the common mistakes that are made by homeowners or contractors that could affect the drywall process? Well, some of the mistakes that we come up with that people don't provide heat, you know, for the mud to dry, the application to turn out the way it's supposed to, but they don't second guess themselves as far as door openings, you know, check things two or three times, uh, window openings, lighting centered correctly, you know, you have backing for your toilet rack, you know, that type of thing. They just need to double and triple check all their openings and the measurements so it doesn't affect the drywall process. So with regards to heat, how, how much heat, how long before, is there a good rule of thumb for people to be aware of? So we don't have heat here yet, so it's something I should look into. Well, actually, this is actually pretty important when I walked <laughs> in here. So um, if you have any sort of heat, you know, you know, if it's in the 65, 70 range, you know, that's that's great. 
we'd like to be in the 70 range for when we do application of mud over a, you know like a week before we get in and then you know for the duration of the project but as long as it doesn't freeze on you the freeze will crack the mud and, and then it's not good <laughs> Do you see a common thing that homeowners will try to cut corners or save money that down the road it ends up costing them more money or more pain or hassle? Yeah, in some some cases, if somebody's trying to remodel a house or they, they move into a house and they want to cut costs, they don't um, they won't finish their garage. Or if they got a storage or a basement down below, they won't finish that. And they'll with intentions of them doing it themselves, and usually they don't never do that. <laughs> and the 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 little bit of money that it would cost them to have someone else do it professionally and get it done. Um, you know, if they could have a crystal ball and look in the future, 10 years down the road, they'll still be wanting someone else to do it for them and so, cost them a lot more money. If somebody does save a unfinished basement or a garage, I'm assuming if they had the drywall it's while they were doing the rest of the house, just add it on, it'd be less expensive versus two years down the road, having someone come back and do the consultation is would they be paying significantly more if they waited? Yes, they'd probably be paying a lot more. Um, take into factor that you're going to have to mask out all the all the walls. You're going to have to mask out the hallway going down to any place you go to. Um, just getting the board in there could be a problem. You may not be able to get 12-foot board down there, and you have to take 6-foot board down there, and it's going to be a lot of extra work for the person. Yeah, there's a lot of other factors that come involved, but most of the... Going into a finished house is is a big pain and someone can pay a lot of money for it. So this is the phase our house is in. We're looking at putting up drywall. Is there anything I should be thinking about with movement or settling of the house? Uh, yeah, your main concern is, is the way the trusses are designed. They lift up in the middle of the house and come back down. Depends on the how hot and cold it is. Um, what we do is, as a drywaller is we put angle metal in the middle of the house against the walls so we don't screw to those trusses so you get a little bit of movement and that will cut it down from all the you'll see cracks and separation in the ceiling and from the ceiling and the walls that's where that's come from and that's another question you should probably ask your drywaller when you start to see if he's reparable or not so the angle metal that reduces the cracks and all yes it'll from take, movement. exactly right another thing is when uh a reputable drywaller or someone when you're concerned is 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 he going to come back and fix your one-year walk mm, okay. you know like like when we're in business whoever's building your house is guaranteed a one-year walk we'll come back and fix all your nails nail pops your little cracks hairline cracks and stuff like that mm -hmm. so that's something that should be expected from okay. your drywaller so say somebody has a popcorn ceiling and they are interested in removing it for a nice smooth surface what would that process look like assuming it's not asbestos well, first of all, it's an ugly scene. It's going to be dirty. <laughs> um, if they haven't painted it, um, you can spray some light water on there and take a knife and, and it'll come right off for you. Um, if they painted it, it doesn't. you won't need to add any water. You just got to get up there and try to chisel it up. But once you get to the bottom side and you scrape it off, it actually comes off pretty pretty good. And then you just have to see what, what the drywall looks like underneath, what how good a tape job they did. Sometimes they do um, a double or you put a couple coats on there and you're going to have to put another coat on there to, to make it look good. A lot of times they, they might be over primer where you don't have to do much at all. Just a couple little touch-ups and stuff like that and you're good. But most of the time you're in for a long, 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 long <laughs> effort and a lot of work. So we weren't planning on taking all of our drywall out. So now we are <laughs> have a completely gutted house. So we're looking at everything including bathrooms is there a special material for bathrooms is that a concern for around the showers and the tubs if you're going to put a um a tile back a tile finish on that would be a concern that the tile guy would want a concrete board behind that as far as the you know the water board and stuff that they used to have i believe that uh, the new board that they've come out with has more fibers or just as much fibers as that and they don't use them that much anymore. In residential housing, we don't. There's no code to put it in, so um, they don't use it as much. So, in the walkthroughs, did you bring up if this is area is going to be tiled, or is that a question that would come up during a walkthrough? Yes. Yeah. And uh, either your tile guy or your home home builder will 
put a mark out where the sheetrock will stop and the concrete board will finish up to it. So our house was built in the 50s. It looked like everything pretty much was nailed on. I'm assuming that's changed with regards to how people fasten drywall now. <laughs> yeah, quite a bit. They don't use nails anymore. Everything's everything's screwed up um, for uh, mainly because of vibration. Vibration brought the nails out too quick and the screws seem to hold a lot better. But uh, for your application of half inch drywall, they use inch and a quarter screws. And if you're in the garage and you need to use five eighths, use inch and five eighths screws. And if you have a foundation wall that sticks out, you can always use liquid nail on it. Just make sure that you press up hard and, and have the glue do its job. So after the drywall's been hung, what do you look for? What should you keep an eye out for to ensure final quality end product? After we hang the sheetrock, this is another part is we should take a walk walk through with the homeowner. Make sure all your uh, windows are, are plumb, lined up. Make sure your, your lights are centered where you want them to be centered and your walls are straight. And we can take care of them at this point when, before the taper starts. Because once you, if you don't catch it till the end job and they have to tear it out and patch it in, it's extremely tough to match. And you may be seeing that patch for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants that. <laughs> And then I'm assuming the other big question is money. So what are some of the, we've talked about finishes, I'm assuming that plays into the cost, but what are some of the big things that affect the cost? Obviously the finish has a, has a big thing to do. Um, the window wraps, uh, you know, how much metal you need to put on. Do you have to wrap a window with four sides with sheetrock, three sides with sheetrock? Uh, your openings, is it gonna be a wood wrap opening, sheetrock opening? Just depends on how much labor intensive that you know we have to perform for you um you know wraps around your fireplaces you know it depends on how a homeowner's preference if they want wood on their fireplace or if they want to wrap every little teeny corner with sheetrock and metal so every the little details add up well daryl thank you so much for coming out here it's really exciting getting mm -hmm. close to the drywall phase personally i'm most excited for it Really appreciate you taking the time. Well, thank you, it was a pleasure and it's gonna be fun working with you. <laughs>